Greetings from Shreveport, Bossier City, Louisiana for the 2022 Volleyball Nations League here on VolleyballWorld.TV. It is the final day of week one and up next, Japan will be facing off against Team USA. This is the second match of the day here inside Brookshire Grocery Arena as we saw Poland take down Germany in a five set thriller earlier and then Tonight, the final match of the week will be Canada squaring off against Korea. And here is where we currently stand on the classification table as it is updated in real time. We had three matches being played today in Ankara, Turkey. Japan is currently undefeated as is the top ranked team from the United States of America. And here we'll see the head to head matchup between these two programs. The USA has dominated Japan throughout the past FIVB competitions. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Matt Prosser, and I'm pleased to say joining me is the always insightful Salima Rockwell. Salima, let's start with the team from Japan, still undefeated in week one, beating Canada, Germany, and the Dominican Republic. But tonight, they are certainly going to have their hands full with. Team USA. Well, uh, that's absolutely right. There's so much power, firepower coming from the USA, no matter who they've had on the court. But the thing about Japan is their ability to play defense, control the ball, and run a fast offense. So that's going to be the key to the match tonight. Can they handle all the heat and the power of the USA with their defense? And I think they have the ability to keep the ball alive, keep it off the floor. The question is, is how well can they control it so they can stay in system to beat the USA block? And our players to watch for Japan, this lady right here, Arisa Inoue has had a fantastic start to the VNL, the middle blocker, or excuse me, the outside hitter scoring 39 points and has been a very key part to the offense for Japan. The second player to watch for us tonight is Irina Ogawa. She is the middle blocker that has scored 29 points and has been big for them, beating the block, lots of speed getting off the floor. And for this group, Team USA coming off a huge win over Brazil last night, world number two in three straight sets. They have to expect Japan to play a very different style of volleyball here today. Salima, how do you expect Team USA to handle that difference? Well, the, here's where it gets interesting with a fast offense playing against a very big team that plays high and USA runs a fast offense too. So they're used to seeing some of that in their gym. Can they control their block, get over quickly, just surround the ball without reaching high, getting tooled and being in the right spot at the right time. So for them, it's serving tough, which we know the USA does well and getting Japan off the net. And a couple of players to watch, and it's hard to say they've been spinning the dial here a lot at the VNL, giving experience to a lot of players. And Maddie Kingdon, we'll take a look at her and see if she gets on the court tonight. She's a former Arizona grad and has a ton of international experience. The other player to watch for the USA will be number 18, Kara Bajama, All-American at the University of Washington. She's played a little bit so far here today. We'll see what Karch Karai decides to do on the outside and who he's going to put on the court tonight. Well, it definitely will be an entertaining matchup between these two programs, different styles. Japan is physical in their own right, don't get me wrong, but they just are very fundamentally sound in their serve reception and their back row defense, as we saw their libero Manami Kojima have 27 digs in their last match. She's going to have to have a little bit more than that tonight going up against such a big physical team from team from the United States. For sure. And, and again, the question is, how well can they control the ball to run their transition offense? Very much so. So as the lights come back up here in the arena, we will see first the introduction of Team Japan's reserve players. They'll start this match on the bench as they emerge from the player tunnel. Make that long jog across the competition floor over to their respective bench area. High fives to the coaching staff, support staff, interpreters, everybody that's come along on this trip. 
And Salima, take us through the starting seven for Japan, please. Well, we'll start with Serena Koga. She has been the biggest player for this team already with 69 points all in the VNL this week. She's going to be a key point outside hitter for Japan today, starting on the outside. Middle hitter, number five, Hario Shimashura. She has been good as well. She's a middle blocker that's fast, quick, reads well. Other outside hitter, she's one of our players to watch tonight. Number 10, Arisa Inoue. Keep an eye on that young lady right there. Another outside hitter, number 15, Kotona Hayashi. She's getting the start tonight for Japan. Number 25, the other middle blocker starting for Japan, Arena Ogawa. She is the second player to watch on the team here tonight. And starting at setter position, number 30, Nanami Seki. So much is riding on her tonight to run that fast offense to beat the big block of USA. And the libero, so much fun to watch, so good at the game. Number nine, Manami Kojima, who will be a key, key part of anchoring the defense for Japan. As low fives for her as I had the pleasure of interviewing her yesterday after the match. She's. Uh, it was a little bit of a height discrepancy there between the two of us, but uh, great attitude as you see the starting seven for Japan. And there you will see the head coach, Masayoshi Manabe from Japan, leading his squad in his very stoic fashion that he does. And meanwhile, for Team USA, here are the reserves coming from the player tunnel now. High fives across to their coaching staff. As they get ready for the introductions of their starting seven, Salima. And we will take a look at the first one out the tunnel is the team captain, middle blocker number six, Tori Dixon. She is definitely the experienced calming force on the team for USA. And number seven, Lauren Carlini. Starting setter for the U.S. in today's match versus Japan. And outside hitter number nine, Manny Kingdon, does get the start tonight. She is one of the outside hitters and one of our players to watch. Number 11, the lefty, Annie Drews, gets the start tonight. Opposite position for the USA. The other outside hitter for the USA is Kara Bajima. She's getting the start tonight. We'll keep an eye on her and see how some of these newer players to the VNL fare for the US. Middle blocker getting another start for the USA. We started in their last match. 31, Hannah Stevenson, the middle blocker, All-American from the University of Louisville. And starting in the Libero position once again is number five, Morgan Hans, hence the All-American from Stanford. There's the starting seven for the United States, led by that gentleman right there, the living legend, Mr. Karch Karai. And here we see the graphic that will show where the players are starting on the court. This will be rotation one for Team USA, as you see the setter there in right back position. Japan will be playing from the right side of your screen. They're wearing the white uniforms. Meanwhile, the United States on the left side in the all navy blue kits with the red libero uniform today. Both teams are ready. Get this match underway here and the setter for Japan, Nanami Seiki will get us underway. Short serve right at the gate. It's the U.S. in trouble. But the 
counterattack in transition goes out of bounds. So USA escapes that one. Missed opportunity there by Japan. These are the chances they need one on one in transition. Seeing they can find the court, especially when they get the passer hitter on the ground there and USA in trouble. And Annie Drews gets blocked on her first attempt. Japan leading the blocking category now. Well, it's a start, it's early yet, but they're there in place and in position when USA is a little bit out of system. Long way to go still, and we do expect Team USA to get a few more blocks throughout this match. There's Kingman going high off the hands in transition. That's going to be critical for them. The USA really working the out of system game, and they are one of the best teams in the world at training it, seeing it, seeing the block in front of them hitting high off the hands out of system. Well, the back one from Japan works through the middle. That's the speed we talked about at the onset. Perfect pass here going right to the middle. Shimamura up quick, beats the block off the floor. Tori Dixon comes right back though, showing her range over the block and down. Dixon with so much experience, vision, such a smart middle blocker, sees the open position well on the floor. There's a service error. Back slide from Dixon. Japan keeps it alive. Oh, it's another block that time. In a way, gets it right back at Tori Dixon. In a way, timing that perfectly in a very good position against Dixon on this trans. She starts bunched in. Watch this free ball play coming around. Nice block. And short serves causing problems for USA. In a way, goes high off the block and through the inline. Very smart play, and as you said, that short serve really giving USA a lot of trouble here, but a smart swing. USA has to just stay low and controlled and not reach high on any of these blocks. Andy Drews gets that one. A little loose connection, but it was effective. Well, they continue to work on this connection, especially as Lauren Carlini moves along the court. She wants to keep all of her offensive options open. And Inoue continues to roll for Japan. Well, this is what we've seen from her. That's why she's one of the players to watch. Very effective outside that has great vision. You see her reach at the top of her reach and snap on top of the ball to get the tool. Bajima from the left side goes high over the block for the point. But Bajima, very physical attacker, sees that area of the court, doesn't have to worry about the block in that situation because she can just go OT. Ashima shows the range that time with that slam down. Using the different areas of the court, I knew, you know they train this in their gym, reaching and just throwing that one right in front of the, the defense. There's that back row attack right on the line from Japan. Creative offense that they run. Very quick and through the back row, and that's the USA does it in their gym, so it's something they're not unused to seeing, but they have to just get on top of it quickly. Two 
And Japan off the block and down for a point, so. Well, two things they're doing well, serving tough, getting the USA off the net, but then handling it when it comes to them in out of system plays, digging the ball and transitioning out of it. That's the key. Attack of Japan, so fun to watch, but so fast. It's, Salima. The transition has been very good. They're they're able to slow the ball down, control the the dig right to the setter, and again running their entire offense with four hitters coming at you all at the same time. The service error error from Ogawa lets Team USA off the hook. Lauren Hart, lady back to serve for the USA. And there is Stevenson and Drews with the monster block. And that's a fast set to the outside. Stevenson is quick. He goes off one foot. That's that block move when you have to make up a little bit of time. Stevenson does that very well. Side, finds the block and down for Team USA, and he Drews gets it that time. USA staying patient with this rally, going back over and over again, making smart swings, and a nice finish there for Drews. Setter dumped that time, nicely done by Seiki in transition. Seiki sees the block, not really paying attention. She knows that she has this opportunity to score. Stevenson comes right back with her first attack through the middle. Good pass by the USA, that opens everything up. Perfect pass, getting Stevenson the ball one-on-one -on -one for the kill. This air too strong from Bajima. And Japan gives it right back, and we're tied at 11s here. Early action of set number one. Japan came out of the gates really strong, put Team USA a little bit back on their heels, and see if Stevenson can keep this ball in play. Jinxter, my bad, sorry, broadcasters jinx once again. And that'll bring us to our technical timeout with Japan leading 12-11. Give us your take here, Salima. Well, you know, it's a back and forth, and this is early on in the set. That's what you expect, trying to get a feel for one another in their offenses. All right, just remember, hey, on number 10 on the go, goes up, not right hand up, but let's get a little further, about a step further on. Here we go. So you heard Coach Karai talking about being ready for the short serves from Japan. They did that right out of the gate. Again, causing some problems for the serve reception from Team USA, but you also heard him, heard him say they're going to do the same thing right back to Japan. Right, absolutely. They both know that that's where they can jam up the offense. That's the key when you're trying to run something fast, especially to the outside. Try to get your left side passer to move in, get the middle blocker uninvolved in the offense as best you can. And that's how you change it up serving-wise. A lot of flat, deep ones in the seam and then mixing up the short. Back to it now as Shimamura will serve. 
come out of the back row and she gets it off that pass from Tori Dixon. Well, they're running this even a lot faster and Carlini straight up in the air. You see her putting that right where it needs to be for Bajma out of the back row. There's a winner from the right side. Hayashi gets it down. So fast, that set to the back pin. Even when the block is almost there, they're a little bit late trying to catch up with that set. Short serve, pass goes over the net. And again, it's Shimamura out of the back row. And USA really needs to focus on this. Short serve, whose responsibilities? are the serve right now. Japan hammering <laughs> themselves out of that one. That was a fun rally to watch, Selima. So fast. There's Hence laying out for that back row attack and then just coming back at them so fast. If Japan has a free ball and a chance to run their quick offense, it's tough to slow down. And he Drews is able to go off the block and out of bounds. What a pickup on that setter dump in the middle of that rally. Keeping it alive on Japan's side, but here's that back row attack by Drews. So good with that left hand. No whistle yet, play on. Dig from Hence. And Bajima delivers cross court for the winner. And Seki thought that block was down when she got Bajima the first time, but everybody stayed with the play. Here it is the pancake by Hence keeping it alive, and Bajima right back for the second swing. They can't reel that one in as it falls on their side. So Japan taking that two-point lead once again. It's now 16-14. Kingdon out of the back row, but she misses on the wrist away swing. And a good pass by Bajima. Gives them the chance to have that attack, but a miss there. Hands <laughs> again with a dig, kicking it for the back row. Oh, the set from Carlini all the way outside of Bajima who finds the corner. So much incredible defense, both sides. That finish all the way across the court gets outside the block. Bajima sees it, cuts it down the line. Got to applaud the effort from both sides on that rally. Short serve, overpass. Three contacts. USA is going to get that one. That's the thing you expect an overpass to come over, and then you forget. You're like, oh wait, they have more contacts, and they keep, they stay with it. Now Team USA still down by one. Let's dig. And Bajma blasting that one off the block and out of bounds. Not afraid to swing at the block and really challenge it. Here's that play, getting her feet there, challenging the left hand of Ogawa. 
Now Team USA really starting to find their footing on the defensive side. Well, that's the thing we talk a lot about the Japanese defense. USA plays very good defense. They run a fast offense as well. But there's that crossing play that Japan has run so well and effective is the backslide to the C out of the back row. So the point goes to Japan. It's 18 serving 17. Short serve ace in front of Pence. Wow, that's a nice serve. Again, it's not high, hard to track. It just falls. Watch it sink as the ball crosses the net and just drops right in front of the passer. Now she follows it up with a service error. Going from that same serve, though, that kind of mid zone dropper. Carlini goes right back with the short serve. But there's a net violation on Japan. That was Koga in the net after she attacked. Like that, we've got 19 across the board. And both sides serving a lot of short balls. We'll see if they mix it up a little bit and kind of yo-yo go short deep here. The wrist away shot from the back row works. It's difficult to read, especially with the two block blockers right in front of the attacker. That one goes off of Boschman's shoulder for the service ace. Tries to get out of the way of it, but this serve flat, straight down the line, precise as it could possibly be. Tried to cut that one inside the block. Didn't have her feet under her very well. So Japan has pulled out to a three-point advantage, 22-19, and Coach Kirai wants to talk it over. He calls a timeout. Let's listen in, so we will talk out. Social media engagement going pretty well here. Once again, don't forget to use that hashtag now, most of that conversation being led by the assistant coaches there from Team USA. And they're just working out, certainly the serve of Japan has really been disruptive when, when you see Anna Stevenson back up to pass the short ball and then the ball goes behind her, that's trouble. And then they can't stay in system, that's what they're going for again. That, that serve right there, kind of over the, that shoulder of Stevenson makes it very difficult to pass unless someone from the back row comes in to take care of it. Now the service error brings USA to within two, as Bajama will serve now. But down the line goes Koga with the aggressive line swing. She can hit hard and fast and gets just outside of the block of Kingdon. Koga will serve now, 23-20. Stevenson goes high and off the block for the point. Perfect pass there in the middle for USA. Kingdon with a big approach. Excuse me, Stevenson with a big approach running all the way in, getting that high swing off the hands.
Diving dig, Kingdon from the left, and she gets it. Just out of the reach of Kojima, the libero for Japan, and a nice counterattack by the U.S. Steady defense by the U.S., keeping it alive, and Lauren Carlini keeping them in system with that perfect delivery to the outside. So Japan now calls their timeout. Good conversation right there from head coach Manabe. Taco hats in the house. <laughs> Twenty-two serving twenty-three. USA still down by one. Off serve. Dig. Here comes a chance. Eight set. Drews tips it over. And Koga gets it through the block and down in transition. It's been all their transition game coming back, but of course. All these opportunities are forced by what they do with the first ball. Quick, and that's what the USA needs to just go low and over, shooting those hands up to see if they can seal the net. So Ishikawa has come in to serve. It's set point for Japan. States. That long rally gives the point to Japan, and look at that. Japan steals set number one. Uh, they played well. They they had a strategy going into the set, serving short, disrupting the offense, playing good defense, and beating the block in transition. We talked about that right before the match. That's exactly what they needed to do, and they were able to execute. Well, that long rally, you saw something where the Americans seem to be dropping their hitting trajectory a little bit, lowering it, and getting some good deflections and blockbacks are Team Japan. So maybe Team USA needs to aim a little higher and deeper with their attacking, try to get the fingertips off the block, as we saw from Stevenson through the middle, and Bajima from the left. But credit to Japan, yeah. really executing their game plan nicely. Absolutely. our team statistics from set number one. What do you see here, Salima? Well, even in attacks like we thought, but the, the surprise I would say, well, not surprise, but some of the blocks, Japan slightly has the edge. That was two to one. So small margins, and that's every game. It's small margins, strategy, scouting. What, what now, what adjustments can we make here? Again, to disrupt offense, and we'll look at the attack direction by the USA as they are looking to go some cross court from the left side. I don't, and from the right side as well. And the attack direction from Japan on the right side, hitting mostly cross court, not so much down the line on the left side as well. So it's good to see some of the attack percentages, distribution, and where they're hitting cross and down the line. There's our in arena MC, Rob on the mic. Rob is Sparrow doing a great job engaging the fans. All right, now I'm bringing the camera over to you. So at that 
end of set one, Inoue with seven points, 55% attacks, a block and four digs. One of our players to watch, and she's, she's long, she's got some length, she can move the ball around, she can kind of go toe to toe with USA with some of her size, ability to hit high, and slow some of the balls down at the net. So Team Japan back out onto the court to start set number two. No changes from their starting seven. No reason to make any changes. They won the set. Yep. Two service aces. Let's see if they continue that short serve strategy. Paid off for them. Meanwhile, for the United States. No changes in their starting crew either. Got to slow some things down, especially that thick out of the back row for Japan. See if they can clog it up a little bit. So Carlini will get us off in set number two. can't contain that one, so Japan scores the first point of set number two. And Japan's been very smart, out of system too, not just blasting right into the block, seeing the defense tipping over the top. Andy Drews tries to make a play on that by turning back to play that ball. Big, high, deep swing from Andy Drews. Andy Drews moving it around, sees the block in front of her. The two blockers get there, but she's able to split it right away. You see that big seam in the block goes high and deep. Center line violation called against Japan, and Team USA gets that point. What a rally. Love watching both these teams staying with it, going hard after the ball on defense as well. Serve from Bajima. But high off the hands goes in a way. She's been strong on the left for Japan. So one of the best at tooling off the hands. Sees it well, gets herself in position, keeps herself out of the net at the end of the play. and passes that one, gets the set in the middle, but misses it out the sideline. A little bit of that give and go. She's got a block in front of her and tries to avoid a goal because she sees her and just runs out of room. Big swing from Kingdon on the left to the point. Maddie Kingdon get all the way in there, her feet to the ball. So Lauren Carlene has the bumps at this ball. Not super high, still flat and fast, so she can get on it quick, past the block. So there's a service error. Drews drives it past the block and down. 
Beautiful set by Lauren Carlini moving forward just a little bit, pulls the block slightly. You see the block has the front, the middle blocker. Ogawa is already over there and Drew's one on one. But right back at Team USA comes Ogawa with the backslide. Ogawa sees it, comes straight in, and then fades all the way out to the antenna. You see Kingdon shuffle steps over and is a little late. And Koga sneaks it past the block and down. Koga, the leading point, point scorer on the tournament for Japan, finds the inside hand of Tori Dixon. Gets it through. High free ball, nearly hits the scoreboard. Bajima transitions out of the back row for the point. Nice transition play by USA on that free ball. Watch the offense coming at you. Bajama with one blocker in front of her finds the floor. Comes through on the second one and the finish on the end from Koga. Service error gives Team USA an easy side out. Saw those excellent receptions, 75% by Japan and 44 excellent by USA. That's perfect pass. Attack Japan just extending the rally and then finally getting the point in transition. Well, and that was the question can they dig the ball precisely enough to force a fast offense and stress the USA block? And right now, they're, they're doing just that. from the left side gets it off the high hands and out of bounds for the point. That's a big time swing for Bajima. Going high and deep into that corner and getting the hands. <laughs> Stevenson with the two-handed throwdown. So waiting for that little miscommunication on the side of Japan and that offensive play. And Stevenson waiting there, sees it come and hangs and throws. Say scores on that long rally. Well, USA is doing a better job defensively against the Vic and the back row attacks. They're digging those balls and giving themselves another opportunity to score. Smart little roll shot by Drews. Kingman gets 
turned down by Japan out of the back row. Good help on the block by Hayashi stepping in there. And both blockers in a perfect position to block the ball. Japan finding a deep corner for the point. Moving that set around, but here's coming inside just a little bit more, not all the way out to the antenna. You see they bring this ball in the court so she can hit past the blockers. Yeah. Andy Drews uses the hands of the block and out. Clutch swing by Drews off the hands. She winds up and goes down the line. Japan with another monster block on Drews. That ball was a little bit tight to the net, and Drews just couldn't find her way around this big block, waiting for Shimamura all over it. Well played and executed by Japan. We take a two point advantage at 12 10, and that takes us to our technical timeout, Salima. In a way, it's been very good and a smart shot watching Lauren Carlini come off the line. And she finds it. Here's that winning shot right there. A lot of Japanese fans in the crowd here this afternoon. Right now, Japan is doing a good job. They've reestablished that two point advantage. I haven't seen as many short serves. What's been the difference, Salima? No, they're driving the ball just a little bit deeper now on the USA and getting getting that ball to come off the net and force USA out of the system a little bit. But but really, they've been steady again, controlling the ball defensively right to the target and running that second ball back. Wow, and he drew from the right side. A very quick overhead set. Very fast. It's a nice timed ball and in a way stops short trying to get that cross court swing and she hits it just outside of her lips way too much line. They can't get the ball over. What about the defense from Team Japan? My, oh my goodness. goodness is right. Wow. The USA unloading on the ball and a couple of big digs on the side of Japan. A little miscommunication to finish from USA. We know Japan can play defense behind, especially Kojima, the libero, but that time it was Inoue stepping in and digging that serious heat from Kingdon's left side attack. Swing from King Dan goes off the block and out of reach. Very high flat swing. Lauren Carlini is pulling it about 12, 13 feet off the net here. Had to force that one to the outside with some pace and does it well. 
service ace from Drew. Gives it right back to Japan. USA struggling to find rhythm on both sides of the ball here. Drews misses again, this time into the net on the back row attack. All, the, all these last passes have been at 11, 12, 13 feet off the net, and really USA trying to keep a rhythm in system. You talked about the rhythm, and that's why they can't find it right now. In a way continues to be a serious thorn in the side of Team USA. This time she scores in the back row. It's now a four point advantage for Japan and Team USA calls their timeout. Team USA in some serious trouble here, down by four. Second half of set number two. Back-to-back -back errors from Annie Drews. Passing hasn't been on point. Not a lot of offense through the middle of the court. And Japan really just playing solid volleyball all the way around. Kingman goes high off the hands and out of bounds. After a solid dig from Morgan Hentz, keeping that ball alive and they're able to run in transition, but Lauren Carlini keeping them in system from way far off the net. Just catching the pinky finger on that one. And Drews delivers from the right side. That's gonna be trouble. An easy setter dump. Hence is gonna read this play. Perfect lineup for Annie Drews to hit one-on-one -on -one outside the block. Annie Drews with that long wind-up, really torquing that left shoulder back to get on the ball. Save for Carlini. And Koga finds it between Dixon and the net. Oh man, that's a, that's a lucky get by Koga. But good defense remains for Japan. Finishing in, in transition. Hands passes a short one, but it goes over the net and out of bounds. So that's a service ace for Ogawa. And had a lot of trouble with these short serves. Again, not just right to an area of the court, dropping, falling, hence having to cut off another passer there. I think that was Kingdon in the right back area of the court. Very difficult. In this rotation that Team USA is in, the short serve basically takes Tori Dixon out of her approach as well. So gets her out of the way completely in the block and gets set. Causing a lot of chaos. Right on cue, Tori Dixon stays on the right side and gets the point off the back slide. Well, they want to run that and at least keep her involved in the offense. And that's what they can do there when the ball's just a little bit off the net. If it's up and down at all, Lauren Carlina can get right underneath it and run her offense. Right on cue again is Koga in transition with that sharp angle right in front of Tori Dixon's defense. Just so fast and quick. You see the block finishes after she swings at the ball. Oh. 
Stevenson with a long distance backslide from Carlini. She scores. She gets on her horse and runs. She's so fast. Gets all the way to the antenna. You watch that arm cock back. She's got that deep scoop on the swing. Hits it off the block. The USA scrambles, but they can't return it. And now Japan has reached 20 to 16. There's that fast swing on the outside by Hayashi. Getting it done once again for Team Japan. Bajima, she's been pretty quiet here in set number two, but she hammers that one down for the point. Really nice job of getting deep enough when this ball's off the net to keep this ball in front of her so she can track it, see the block, and hit around it. Overload to the right side with the back one, and then the quick set to the pin for the point. And that's trouble. You watch that middle blocker hold the middle blocker of the USA, and that's why they're able to score on the right side of the court. Both blockers a little bit late on that play. There's Ishikawa. She's just come in to serve. Maddie gets that one. Off the block and out of bounds for the point. Kingdon, no stranger to international competition, blasting off the top of the hands. Very smart outside hitter. Sees the block very well. Dana Recchi entering the game here for the USA. USA can't return that one, so it falls for a point. That's another good pass in. Holds the block a little bit, and the defenders kind of cross paths there and can't get in the way of the ball quickly enough. And they'll clean up some sweat off the floor. Take a look at Hayashi getting ready to serve. And if she drops one in there, just jam up this short play. With a middle blocker. She does. Kingdom goes cross court. It's called in. Point awarded to the United States, but we're going to see our first challenge. And definitely thought it was out. Let's see if it just clips that line. That's called the ball in and out challenge, and Japan is contesting that the ball was out. This is a big challenge here as Team USA has been behind. That ball's in, so challenge is unsuccessful. Point stays with the Americans. Japan scores their 23rd point. Getting the rattle here. Quick set. Rawa getting him quickly. His hits are kind of flat as to not get blocked. Sato comes in to serve now. 23-19. Tough serve. On her first attack on the backslide. Give it to Dana Recchi. She's ready. She came off the bet. She wanted to make a difference here in that high slide attack, high and fast. Japan is no match for that swing. Americans need a run here. Scoop from Hens. Bajima can't find it. Hoga right back. The speed is 
so fast for Japan. Just so good. And scoop it up quickly, fling it out to the antenna, beat the block back. Lauren Carlini trying to get back in time and doesn't quite make it. And it's set point to Japan. Their first attempt. They have four chances. Ogawa with the short serve again. But Redke is blocked by Ogawa and Koga. And that'll do it for set number two. Japan silencing the crowd and taking a 2-0 advantage here in this match. Well, Japan playing very well. Here's that block to finish the play. You see Dana Recchi going back into that cross, but Koga reading it well, taking it away. Stops short, dives into the cross court, and gets Drews on the way out. Really good awareness from the veteran that is Serena Koga. She's been playing for this team for a very long time. You saw that she expected and anticipated Recchi getting that set as she left a little bit early. But very technically sound block right there. Japan winning. 25-22 and 25-20 so far. Really putting USA again in a hole early on and then just not letting their foot off the gas. Well, there's so much that they're doing well and right and strategically. I was going to comment on how well Lauren Carlini is playing defense, but it's also a testament to them hitting the balls in her direction, forcing her to play defense. So they're setting a lot of balls out of the system. Morgan Hentz has to set a lot of balls. Lauren Carlini is leading USA with 12 digs. When she's running the offense and they're in system and can get the bit going and get the offense going, they're they're dangerous. So I, I like a lot of the strategy of funneling balls towards that right back right now on the USA. USA absolutely can respond here, but just one thing that I noticed looking at what was going on. So we'll take out the stats here. 17 all on the board. Attack-wise, Japan with a few more blocks and USA with a few more errors. So it's the blocks and the errors that are making the difference right now. Two things that are very surprising to see Japan leading the Absolutely. block category and then Team USA leading the attack error category. Absolutely, they're very good out of system, but there's, again, they're still continuing to work on. I mean, every, every team is, it's no excuse. Continue to work on some rhythm here with their setters and their hitter. New lineups every day, new yeah. hitters on the court every day. But um, but everyone's everyone's in that same situation, so trying to sort it out. So here we see the graphic for the United States. Their center contact, passing the ball in that golden circle, only 32 percent of the time, and that is a very telltale. It's been a huge difference, and look at this: 89 percent perfect pass here by Japan. I'm really in that yellow zone. I mean, that is a huge difference between 30 some to almost 90%, so they can run their offense. I mean, really set whoever they want right now. Japan's serving has been very, very tough. That is a massive difference, you're right, Salima. And to go back to, as we see, Koga's 12 points throughout two sets, that's a pretty good contribution. To go back to the American attack errors that really have given Japan that breathing room, you know, it's a testament to how good the Japanese defense is in the back row that the Americans might be trying to find the very last perimeter of the court and they're just missing the inlines. Yeah, avoiding, it's not just avoiding a block when you're attacking the defense, they're everywhere scooping balls and you want to hit around them and find those empty areas of the court. We'll see if the USA has a couple new players out there. Drew stays in, Parsons has come in, Redke comes in and starts this set. So a couple of new faces for Team USA. Parsons replacing Kingdon. Bajima still out there. Redke replacing Dixon. So Team USA now. Got to take it one set at a time, but the only way they win this match is pulling off the reverse sweep. Larson scores on her first chance. Nice pass from Stevenson, but Japan going right back to that short serve strategy. Yeah, hitting them out of trouble with Parsons. I mean, Carlini is on her knees at the 10 foot line, and Parsons has to find a way to, to get that ball through the block.
So here's Parsons. Just scored her first point of the match. But Japan answers right back through the middle. Shima Mura has been a great addition for them today. Oh, you watch this ball's passed to the right, and Stevenson stays neutral and just hangs out waiting for something to happen when her middle blocker goes all the way past her on the right side of the court. Set, covered, Drews bats it over on two. Chaos on the American side right now. And Japan makes some pay. Kogo once again out of the back row. Yeah, a lot of smart tips on the side of Japan, getting USA on the floor, scrambling a little bit, and coming back through with that big attack. Again, one blocker in front of Koga for the winner. Stevenson responds nicely, gets that ball deep in the court and down. That's the pass they need. They were at 35% perfect pass in that last set, so USA needs to pass the ball well so they can run their offense just like that. Bajima, another extended rally, but the United States wins that one. Kara Bajima really stepping up for the USA, taking some big swings out of system, getting her feet there, ripping the ball hard inside the block. So that's the key, beating that block so they can't slow it down, but beating the floor defense of Japan. Great slow motion replay. Salima, let me ask you a question really fast. As a former setter yourself, the point of contact from Lauren Carlini, where she sets that ball from, really higher than almost anybody else we've seen here in the VNL this week. What's the advantage to that? Well, the advantage is it's difficult to read her because she's got really strong wrists and she can fling it around when the ball is at that same contact point all the time. That's always, that's been her style. And that's how she plays it. Four, co a double contact called on Team USA. We haven't seen that one very much this week, but not too sure how exactly that got spotted by our first official, but no argument from Team USA, so the point goes to Japan. Bajano with the monster block. That's what the USA needs for a little bit of a spark there. Here's the back set. Bajima, the strong move, dropping that right hand into the court. Tip slams it down for the point, says enough is enough. Japan scores it, what a rally. A heck of a rally, both teams going hard, covering some big swings and some massive blocks, and the throwdown for the finish from Japan. What a rally, so much fun to watch. Shimamura, there's a Bajma, Red Key, can't find the floor. And 
Koga gets picked up, Hence runs it down, Drews with nobody up. What a dig from Kojima. And the ball goes over. Oh, <laughs> so my goodness. Kojima. Defense, Kojima digging that ball with no blockers in front of her. Open net dig. And the tip one more time. Hence tries to fly in all the way from the middle, from the left back. Can't pick it up. Smiles all around for the Japan team. Their energy is on point right now. They're playing for one another. And pull off this massive upset here. And Drew somehow gets it down in front of Kojima. It seems like she's digging everything, but. A good, a good touch by Dinarecki to slow it down. That was the key. Slow down the big, give the USA another chance to come back. They need those transition swings. Scoring in transition. The Vic is very fast. Coming out of the back row in transition. Quick attack. It looks like a quick attack. Just a front row attack. Coming in really, really fast. USA unable to slow it down. Parsons is there that time for the kill. Nice block and read from Japan, but couldn't get their hands over in time. Clean swing by Stevenson, working away around the ball. It started with that tough serve from Dana Recchi, disrupting the Japanese offense and getting a free ball back. You see Lauren Carlini and Stevenson talking to one another, sorting out that rhythm. United States with a rare lead here in this game and the match. And it's all going your way. Koga once again gets a solo block. 28 and a half feet back into the court. Koga reading the play, reaching out to get that stuff. A misconnection through the middle. Carlini going to Bajima and a point to Japan. Trying to run that Bic. Again, we talked about the timing of it, the location, the placement of it is very, very precise. And we'll see towards the end of the VNL where that, that is for the USA. And Japan just continues to cause problems. The communication on the American side not there that time. Scramble, both players going up for that ball from Japan, but just the presence of mind is tip it right over the block, and the two players just looking at one another for the USA. Japan continuing to put the Americans in very uncomfortable situations as they've done from the start of the match, Salima. And here's that brilliant tip right inside the block into the left front. That's so close over top of the block. Parsons has to come all the way from the left side of the court to try and make a play. The 
big attack is too hard for Hintz to handle. When that ball is dug up and down around five, six feet for Japan, they love to run this big attack. When it's moving in another direction, they're not quite running it yet. So USA needs to track that and recognize that coming quickly. Hence is there, but can't control it. There's Parsons from the left side, challenging that Japanese block, getting it off and out for a point. See, she can get something going here for the USA. Need some offense, mostly from the left side, because they're still not passing perfectly here, so they need to get their pin hitters going. Good look at Lauren Carlini. He's been running all over the place, trying to run this offense, steady it out for her team. Right down the line again is Koga. Super fast run to the outside. Drew's caught pinched in just a little bit. And Koga finding that line. Koga leading all scores with 16 points off of 14 attacks and two blocks, followed by Inoue with 15 points. 14 attacks and one block as well. So the technical timeout now finds Japan up by four over the United States. Yeah, Coach Manabi must be very pleased with what he's seeing from his team, the effort, the execution. All around quality play. The defense from Kojima and the offense from Inoue and Koga. But for the United States, Salima, what can they do to try to turn this around or else they're going to run out of time? Just got to find some offense going, find ways to, to be creative with what they're doing, pass the ball well so they can run everything. They can put a little more stress on the block. There's Stevenson, gets the pass and then the set. That's what they have to do, find those little plays, just one at a time. They can pass those balls well. The give and go to Stevenson, she's gonna be able to score. And a service error from the United States gives a free point and side out to Japan. Japan turns it going off the block and out. Again, the defense of Japan just too strong and then the counterattack. Well, you can tell a team that trains that all the time, a team that sees a hand out of system, knows exactly what they're going for, the high skips off the hand. Here we see Ali Franti coming in to replace Bajima in the front row to play left front. See if she can be the spark that the Americans need. Well, it starts with a miss serve, so. I remember Franti had a big match. She was the player of the match the last time USA played. Which was last night, less than 24 hours ago. But again, Japan goes down the line. That was in a way that time. In a way, we've said this several times, just how smart she is in seeing the block. When you watch the arm swing, it's not a full swing at all. It almost looks like a serve, just hits it nice and flat so she gets the hands. Carson goes on the big and she gets it to fall on the Japan side. USA continuing to run that big attack, work on that timing. Dana Recchi coming in for the one and Parsons just on the other side of her. Just 
like that. Shimamura, excuse me, Hayashi going off at the Franti block and out into the antenna. And now we see Franti's pinched all the way in, a little bit late to pick up the other hitter. There's two attackers overloading that zone. That's what puts that stress on Franti's block. Oh, nice vision from Carlini with the back dump for the winner. Beautiful play. Block is in front of her as that ball is passed fast to the net. You can see this clearly. She uses that right hand, just flings it around behind her hand head. We have a center line violation on Team USA. Point going to Japan. And again, one of those situations where Team USA just not communicating very well. That was a tough, tight set to the net, trying to make a play on it. See if they can steady the passing out here and get some offense going. And there's a service ace off of Franti. No way with that tough serve down the line. They've been serving very precisely this evening at the USA. Deep and stretches, and certainly some short and stretches as well. Team USA calls a timeout, down by six in set number three. Currently down two sets to zero in the match. And they are in some serious trouble right now. So back to it now, after the USA timeout. Still back to Franti. Parsons rolls it. Kojima's there, but it goes out of bounds. So Team USA gets the point. Here's Retke, let's see what she can do from the inline. And Koga again with the cross court winner that the Americans just can't stop her. Having a hard time slowing this down. You see Dana Retke moves into the middle of the court trying to read this play and leaves the sideline a bit open and that's where Koga is able to attack. And it's 19-13 Japan. They're challenging Franti, she's struggling with the pass, but they get the ball over. And there's a hitting error from the United States. It goes out through the end line. Japan, but we've got a video so we're going to see a challenge here called by Team USA, perhaps looking for a block touch. Drews was going high, looking for those hands. We'll see if we see something, or this can just slow it down a little bit, slow the, the train down of Japan. Challenge is going to be unsuccessful, and the point goes to Japan. Hitting error credited to Annie Drews and Team USA. Ogawa serving now just five points away from winning the match is Japan. Blocked but covered. Another chance for Japan on offense. 
And the backslide works in transition. Shimamura comes in straight ahead, does a little step in fake, and then glides to the antenna to beat the block of the USA. And the offense really clicking for Japan right now. Ogawa now just four points. Parsons says not yet, though, from the left side. She gets a swing and a point. Parsons getting on top of that set, beating the block, beating the defense to the floor. Fourteen twenty-one. Carlini serving for the United States. And a net violation on the follow through that time from Shimabura. So there's a break for the United States and perhaps the start of a the run if they can. They have to find something right now. That's it. Have to find a little something here. Play some defense low and over on the block. Ready for the tools and the roll shots and the inside cut. points in a row. Drews gets it that time. That's a transition play that United States needs. Perfectly dug ball. Quick set behind to Drews. And Team Japan decides to use their timeout after that two-point mini run. Oh, you never know if he'll say go on a big tear. Cut it off early. Now you start to see a little more animation from Coach Minami there as you can sense his team is playing great volleyball. They're only four points away from winning this match in what would be a huge upset and a very good statement victory for Japan here in week number one of the VNL. Absolutely, and seeing Kojima in there in the timeout right afterward, also having some conversation with her teammates about finishing the set. Fronti gets a swing, but you can't find it over the net, so there's the side out for Japan. Japan forcing that in with that big attack, but the U.S. slowing it down a little bit, making an error on that trans. Kogo with the sharp cross court. And that might be the dagger. It's working, that cut has been working. Just keep hitting it. It's tough, Hence was in that hole in the block once you hit the sideline. Safety serves. Parsons, nice dig, Kojima. Koga goes down the line but misses that time, so the hitting error gives the Americans a chance for another run now. Stevenson by herself. A monster block, choosing the right direction, hanging tight, waiting for that big attack. USA finally getting one on Inouye. Good strong hands right there. And another one back to back. It's Franti this time. Ali Franti in the right position. Two blocks, back to back, back, monster blocks. For the USA, a little spark here. See if they can continue a little push. Oh, but the service error out through the inline. It's now match point for Japan off the service error. And Serena Koga will serve for Japan. Super 
super spike. Watch out below, Ali Franti is coming at you. <laughs> Japan just shakes this one off because there is nothing you can do about that ball over top of the block. It's still match point for Japan, just one side out away. They will have four chances at it now as Stevenson will serve. Ball is called out of bounds, but we're going to see a challenge request from Japan. It will be very tense moments as if this is a successful challenge. The match will be over. We'll see if we see it on the replay. Again, a good challenge nonetheless at this point. The USA much making such a big push right here at this point in the match. Oh. And Japan will get the successful challenge. You see it right there, video evidence of the ball going off of Annie Drews. In a way, gets the kill. She is the way for Japan to win the match in a three-set sweep of monumental upset. And a, and a really well-played match by Japan. Executed their game plan, very smart in their strategy with what they were doing, serving-wise to get the USA off the net, and flawless offense for them to finish in transition. Well, as they did all day long in transition and in serve reception, we expected to see Japan play at a very fast pace. That's exactly what they did all match long. But really, they applied the pressure on the United States, United States from the very first serve of the game and forced the Americans to do some things and put them in uncomfortable situations. And Japan will celebrate as they know they just pulled off a huge upset. And something that they don't very often do is get a victory over the United States, as we saw in that head-to-head -head graphic earlier today in the lead-up. 25-22, 25-20, and 25-20 for a three-set sweep over the host team here in Bossier City, Louisiana, Team Japan. In an entertaining match for sure. Koga and Inoue leading their team's point scoring with 19 and 18 points as you see nothing but smiles right there from Team Japan. They are now 4-0 and in this VNL as they continue to stay undefeated. Bit of a surprise there through week one for Japan, but very happy indeed. As here we see the team statistics, total points. Japan was 75, 47 total attacks, six blocks. That's a surprise that they outblocked Team USA. Four service aces, zero for Team USA. Another surprise, and opponent errors, meaning that Team USA forced 18 errors, giving up those 18 points to Japan. Meanwhile, Team USA just really struggled to get the engine going today. They had a short turnaround after a very fun and emotional match win last night over Brazil that ended at about 9.30. Then had to play the 3 p.m. game today as we look at the Japan serve placement. Expect to see quite a bit right there short and in the middle of the court. The one ace that we see in green and again, the Japanese serve pressure really got Team USA on their heels from the very beginning. And they continued that strategy, which turned out to be very fruitful. Let's throw it down to Salima with our match MVP interview. I'm with your match, I'm with your match MVP, Arisa Inoue. Congratulations Thank on the you. win.
You're welcome. You were the best player of the match. Thank you. You're welcome. So tell us about your serving plan and strategy for the United States. You moved the ball around very well today. Talk to us about the strategy involved. アメリカはやっぱり世界一ということで普通にやっても簡単に勝てる相手じゃないと分かっていたのでこうサーブで仕掛けるというかちょっと不意をつくようなサーブを打とうというふうに今日ミーティングで話をしていてまあそれが一セ